Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary, where I do the research to try to teach you a little something about what you're drinking. Today, we're going to be talking about the Springbank 13-year-old, also known as Springbank Green. Now, this is not to be confused with the Springbank 15-year-old, which is part of the core range, but it's also green. And we'll get into that in a moment. So for those of you that like a more in-depth review of Springbank as a distillery, check out the review I did up here on the Springbank 10. But because you're already here, I'll give you a quick little recap, little bullet points. Springbank is a family-owned single malt whiskey distillery on the Kintyre Peninsula in Western Scotland. It was first licensed in 1828 and is one of only three surviving distilleries in Campbelltown. Springbank in general is medium peated, which means that it's not really going to knock your socks off, but it's also not going to get lost. But the Springbank Green 13 is not part of the core range. So why am I bothering to talk about it? Well, first off, I don't just talk about core range stuff, but also the Springbank Green is a reference to the fact that it's made with organic barley. Now they can't use the word organic because there's other laws around using that term. However, they wanted you to know that it was organic barley and now you do. So let's go ahead and just get into the taste of this. Now, this is 46% ABV, non-chill filtered, non-colored, all of the good stuff that you would expect from a high quality whiskey. Um, so let's go ahead and nose this. So it's sweet and it's fruity, but that's not going to be likely the first thing that you get out of here. Um, it took me a while and I, I'll probably go into this whole spiel at the, the end of the video, but let's go more nosing and tasting notes. So you're getting kind of this briny smoke. That might be the first thing that you get less on the smoke, more on the salt air. There's fruit in here. There's red berries specifically. <sighs> Specifically hard to place red berries. Um, if I had to put my finger on it, I would say it's kind of like a raspberry, but it's not as tart as, as a raspberry would be, or it's not as sharp of a smell. There's some leather in there as well, like a boot leather, a really new leathery smell to this. Um, the sh there's, it's X sherry barrel. So some of these, especially the red berry part is coming from there, but I will say that it's not heavily influenced by the sherry, at least for me. You'll know it's there. You're not gonna mistake that it's aged in sherry, but it's not the only note that you're getting. Speaking of other notes that you're getting, um, I'd say apple is in here as well. Probably like a, like a green apple, like, um, but more on the, I'm trying to place it exactly because, you know, I'm, I'm starting to lean more towards like a baked apple um, with a little bit of nutmeg on it, maybe. And so maybe not a green apple, maybe a red apple and uh, like a Honeycrisp or something like that. Anyway, there's there's a lot to pick apart here in the nose. And I challenge you guys, if you have this at home, let me know in the comments other things that you got that you get out of the nose and the taste. So speaking of taste, let's go ahead and do that. Cheers. Mm. Now, here is a taste worth talking about. This is sharp. It's got a, uh, this is going to take me a little bit of uh, time to put eloquently. So I'll probably just give up on the eloquent part and <laughs> just kind of let you know what I taste. So the first thing that you're going to taste is that Campbelltown funk, right? It's there. There's no doubt about it. It's a little smoky, but it's a little different. Tastes earthy, tastes, um, I mean, in this case, it's it's got, hold on. I, I can do this, I promise. It tastes earthy, but it tastes like a dunnage, like, like grassy, mossy, damp, but in a good way. Um, some of the other flavors that you're getting in here might be raisins, uh, could be chocolate. That chocolate is deep. It's deep and it's light, so it's not easy to pick out. And it took me a while to get that note. The raisins, I feel like, are probably easier to pick out. The the mossiness to this with the, the smoke. So when I have this whiskey and I exhale, it tastes, you can almost taste the whole thing again. <laughs> and it's interesting. Like I know, I know that it's a technique that you could do where when you drink whiskey, you let it settle on your tongue, you, you drink it, and then you take another in inhale and you let the air rush over your tongue. And then you can taste occasionally some more things. 
I feel like this has such staying power in the finish that every breath you take, you're kind of still tasting it. It's an interesting thing. The finish on this is very viscous, very thick, and and just what's the word? It's uh, substantial. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Now you're getting a hint of smoke for sure. Maybe a little bit of grill char in there uh, to, to specify the type of smoke. There's a hundred different types of smoke. In this case, I'm getting a little bit of grill char and a little salt air in there as well. There, this is kind of all over the place. <laughs> now, what I will tell you is I don't get a ton of sherry influence on the taste, but I feel like it's getting lost with the other flavors that are here. This is a good whiskey to pick apart and try to test your ability to get different things out of it. And I've tested my abilities a bit. It's hard to pick things out. They're not melded. They're uh, they're different. They're dif you know they're they're dis disparate, but it all works well together. It's not a symphony so much as like a jazz session where you can hear each instrument and maybe you listen to different pieces because you really like that instrument. But all together, it makes a sound that's fun to listen to. In this case, it's fun to drink and it tastes good and it's different. And every time you take a sip, it might be a little bit different. So let's talk overall. Because this one's going to be a little little different than I think what you might be thinking. I will remove any of the suspense and tell you that I think this is a dividing whiskey. But, all right, here, here's where I stand. Overall, this whiskey is not for everybody. No Springbank is going to be for everybody. But a lot of people love Springbank. And so because of that, I bought this whiskey at $130, despite my best uh, my my better judgment, because I didn't love the Springbank 10. And I've gone back, I've tasted the Springbank 10. I'll tell you, it's still not my thing. And I know I mentioned that in the the whiskey review of the you know of 2020, like my overall whiskeys, I put it very low on the list. I got a little bit of flack for it, but you know that's fine. It's my list. I stand by it. But the Springbank Green was recommended to me by several people on the Discord channel, and they all said I was going to like it. I tried it. I was so excited. I did my first tasting for the patrons. I put it up, and I really, really didn't like it. I was so disappointed that I didn't like it. It took me... Now, let me show you this. I left... Actually, let me sideline real quick. I left it in the bottle because despite the fact that a lot of people comment that the the, the box and the presentation is not very uh, over the top. It's not. But I love that they just have it be like a window into the bottle because I feel like, again, a distiller is trying to highlight the whiskey and marketing would do well to highlight the whiskey. I think that's exactly what this little window frame into the whiskey does. So anyway, I drank, I mean, that's, that's pretty close to half the bottle, maybe a little bit less, but when you consider how much of each one of these bottles I really usually drink before doing a review of it, that's, that's a good amount. And it was over a lot of different sessions. And it took me a long time to like this one. And then there was one day on one of my live streams and I just, it just clicked. And suddenly I was sold on this particular spring bank and I loved it. And I was so happy. And, and like, I, I wish I, I'm probably not going to find the clip because honestly, it'd be boring to watch because it would be out of context. But the face I remember making when I realized, oh, my gosh, I really liked this was so great. And I was so happy with myself for finally liking something that all these other people who drink tons more whiskey than even I do really loved and were telling me I should love because I'm a whiskey lover. And. There's very few times where that happens. I mean, I feel like one of those, not even unspoken, one of those spoken rules is, you know, drink whatever you like. But Springbank specifically was one people were telling me, you should like this. <laughs> so this one took a while and it might take you a while. And if it does, don't be discouraged. You might learn to love Springbank or you might learn to love a different Springbank. But don't give up on the distillery if you happen to try the 10 and you didn't love it or you happen to try any of the other ones. This Springbank is one that I'm going to have a hard time giving a rating to because I feel like a try it won't get the point across if you don't like it. And I feel like a buy it is a significant amount of money to spend on something that you might not like. And I would hate for you to feel the disappointment that I felt 
when I realized I spent $130 on a whiskey I didn't like. So I would say, I would say that this one, I'm, I'm going to cop out a little bit here and I'm not really going to rate it. I think it's first off going to be extremely hard for you to find. Second, if you like Springbank, you will love this whiskey. If you don't like Springbank, if you ended up liking this whiskey, it might take you some time and I'm not confident that you'll get there. So I would say skip it or try it if you get a chance. If you like Springbank or if you like Hazelburn or Long Row or really any, any Campbelltown or any, any really any peated whiskeys, I think this one could work for you. The nuance is fun. The different way that you could pick it apart is fun. And this whiskey is just kind of a good time once you learn to like it. So thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. Thank you to all of my patrons here. Um, you guys are awesome and you helped me actually buy this bottle. So thank you again. And for anybody here who tunes in every week, I really appreciate you and have a great rest of your night. Cheers. <laughs>